record to the cloud. What is this cloud thing anyway? So this is a uh, an OGM special call about strategic issues, which we're defining right now on April 2nd, 2021. Go ahead, Pete. Um, so I, I was, I guess I was the one that, uh, on yesterday's call saying, okay, let's just have a call. Let's get it started. Um, uh, the thing that I am bringing to the to this organization, this quest, um, is just um, getting started energy. Um, uh, this actually won't be my quest. Um, I'm, I'm interested in the topic and, and I think it's super important, um, but I just wanna make sure that we got something started. Uh, so I can also provide uh, a, a little bit of, of support around um, uh, thanks, Matt, for starting the channel on Mattermost, but I can help people get into Mattermost. I can help people, you know, we got the Zoom together. Thanks, Jerry. Um, uh, we'll start some sections on the wiki um, and wherever else we need to. So I, I can help do that. Um, so the question that Doug just had for us was, you know, so what? what is this? What are we talking about? Um, it was Matt who captured it as food insecurity and regenerative ag. Um, uh, I would say food security rather than food insecurity, but um, I actually like the insecurity, the 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 um, the urgency of saying that you know people are insecure right now. I think is also attractive to me. Um, so I would like to hear a little bit more. I guess so. I so there's we'll sort out into. You know, maybe we need two quests. Maybe we need food, a food quest and a regenerative ag quest. Um, maybe, maybe it's all one. Uh, maybe soil health is in there. Um, I was the the thing I was captured by yesterday was Ken actually Ken talking about. Um, I think mostly he was talking about climate. Um, maybe it's Ken and Gil um, climate eventualities. Um, and Klaus, thanks also for your posts on that. Uh, you know, we're we're in deep doo doo right now um, on climate, and then things outside of that. So I don't know which of those are attractive to this group. Um, I think they're all important, and we need to kind of figure out who's who's interested in what. Maybe thanks. Klaus, you're the next person to talk. Yeah, I just came off a call uh, with the uh, business climate leaders team working on this webinar we're planning for about mid-May and the, the way we decided to frame it was uh, uh, agricultural and land use systems for carbon sequestration and ecosystem services. So there are, there are two components. One is carbon sequestration. Uh, the other one is ecosystem services. When, when, when the soil gets enriched with carbon, you know, it, uh, it improves its water retention. Um, it, uh, it uh, creates biodiversity. Uh, so there are, there are ecosystem services that are being provided by doing the same thing, you know, so by, by, by the, through the sequestration of carbon into soil, we are enriching uh, uh, the nature in a holistic manner. So ecosystem services is as important as carbon sequestration. Um, so I'm concerned that the way this is being framed uh, supports silos rather than a broad interdisciplinary discussion. And I just want to frame this from an OGM perspective for a second, because there's, there's um, to oversimplify, there's two different ways of looking at this call. One of them is that Klaus is here as a sort of a participant in and a client of OGM, and we're looking specifically at Klaus's activities and how to further them. The other framing which I think is more toward Doug, what you're looking at and, and kind of what I'm thinking of from the OGM perspective is climate change and soil fertility and, and regenerative agriculture are probably top burner for world issues. And that includes for a lot of members of OGM, how do we spark a conversation around that entire subject? And those, those to me are, are re completely related, of course, but they're very different framings of this conversation. And I just want to understand which one we're in. Because if we're in, the, if we're in the, the bigger one, then Doug, what you just said is like where we, we should begin heading in, in systems directions. If we're in the how do we help class framing, then I think we unpack a, a whole series of other questions. And I just want to know which, which call we all think we're in. Well, I, I would suggest uh, what, what Doug is saying. So the, the way we, we will frame uh, uh, this discussion 
and we're, we're going to broadly advertise this across uh, multiple platforms, is we have a soil scientist, is the chief science officer of the Soil Health Institute, to talk about soil, the capacity of soil to hold carbon, how this all works, and, and uh, why it's so important. Then we are talking to a farmer who has a 13,000 acre fully regenerative organic farm uh, working without chemical inputs and, and how, how he uh, has, has restructured his farm and uh, um, the difficulty he may have, get, how he's getting into the market because in order to farm regeneratively, you need to have a market to sell into. And then we are in the process of inviting someone from Harvard, uh, the Menus of Change Initiative, which is now an anticipatory uh, effort to change the menus that the catering industry is using to, to engage with regenerative farmers. Uh, so so, so, so we, are, we are presenting a systems view. And, and one reason why we want to bring uh, Harvard into the picture is that we don't want to make this a bummer negative kind of thing where people uh, think it's all hopeless, it's beyond, uh, beyond help. And so please, um, uh, and, and give, and, and give, give, uh, give hope, you know, uh, uh, to, for, for personal engagement um, and, 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 uh, and help people to see here's something I can do, you know, to leave it on a positive note. So to go back to <clears throat> where this started yesterday, uh, I suggested that we needed a kind of pretend client in order to test how our process works. The idea of starting out with a real client seems to me really difficult because we're going to be too cautious. Um, I thanks thanks Doug. Um, I don't have that concern because, at least from my perspective, OGM has had several clients already, has has ongoing clients um, or ongoing projects kind of like this, uh, including CSC, Flotilla, Massive Wiki. Um, and me and my brain. And Free Jerry's brain, um, at least. I think there's probably some more. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're used to doing this spinning up things. We're used to getting groups going. We're used to you know getting some infrastructure under them um, as, as a bit of a team, at least. Um, it's not it's not widespread in OGM yet, but there is a, a you know, there's a, a group of people who do this already. So I don't feel like we'll be scared to take action or do decisive things or make, you know, decisive different changes that we need to. Um, I, I do worry that we, I, um, I think Klaus as an OGM client is an interesting perspective. Um, uh, I think maybe also just thinking of, you know, the earth as a, as a client and there's something around climate change and regenerative ag and soil health and all that. Maybe that's an approach. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which yet. And one of the, I mean, one of the interesting conversations that could be had in the space sort of at the strategy level is there are many ways of engaging in the nexus of issues here, whether it's specifically regenerative ag and soil fertility and, and all of that, or other interventions for climate change about uh, albedo management and God knows what. Uh, and then there's uh, what's more appealing, the crisis is, we're all doomed, the crisis that is at hand, or hey, here's some nifty ways of fixing things that don't hurt anybody, in fact, make, make money and all of that. And I think there's a, there's a space here of approaches. And one of the things that I think, but I'm not sure it would be helpful to you, Klaus, is exploring that space a little bit in the context of the things that you're after. And one of the things that I think that OGM broadly would be interested in is on understanding that space and seeing uh, like where we play, how, how do we help you know, across the space? And, and a piece of what I think OGM is thirsty for is a, a conversation about the, the whole climate change uh, ecosystem disaster uh, ball of wax. Go ahead, John. Okay, so a, a couple of trade-offs here. Um, normally a client, I, I get, I think I get the point that if, if you have a, 
client in the classic consulting sense, a paying client that does drastically restrict your your risk assessment about the kind of things that you consider. I'm not sure that that applies in the case of OGM clients or in the case of Klaus, because my understanding is this is a pro bono relationship at this point. It might might turn into something else later, but as long as it's a pro bono relationship, um, that frees us up to consider more riskier and even potentially the things that the client has told us they don't want, you know, but we can still examine them objectively and say, well, does it make sense to us, even if it doesn't make sense to the client? So that's number one. Another interesting trade-off here is, um, I mean, this is an extraordinary group. I, I'm in a lot of groups. I've been in a lot of groups. Um, we're, we're pretty near the, and when I say we, I, I don't mean me personally. <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, the, 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 the you know, Jerry and, and Pete, and, you know, Doug, I mean, you know, we got some extraordinary uh, research power here and, and brain power. And um, even so, whenever you take on a problem, there's a lot of um, work that is basically, you know, dull. I mean, there's like getting, making the connection, setting up the infrastructure, figuring out who the people are, making the contact with those people. It sounds to me, I could be wrong, but it sounds to me like Klaus has done a lot of that work. And therefore, we OGM wouldn't have to go over that same territory, which is we would if we were going to just say, okay, let's look at drawdown. Let's figure out what's the best way for us to intervene and let's go there. So it's just, just considerations. I don't have an absolute yes, no recommendation. I'm just, I'm just articulating the considerations. Okay. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. And I think part of what's what's important and useful and attractive here is that Klaus has done an enormous amount of spade work, has a really strong point of view, and has completely working relationships with important groups around the world that are busy doing this work. So all of that is fabulous. Um, and, and, and I think we're trying to figure out how do we connect into what you've created, Klaus, and be of help? I mean, that, that, that's the simplest way. And then I'll, I'll add that I'm using the word client in the, in the spirit of one of my mentors, Russ Acuff, who would talk about who is the client of the system doesn't usually mean who is the paying client, but who is actually sort of, who are you really trying to serve here? And here, I think we're trying to serve humanity. Want to go ahead, Pete? Yeah, I, yeah. So, so maybe to, to back up and, and follow on from what you were saying, Jerry, um, one of the purposes of this call, um, and not necessarily the only one, but one of the this purposes of this call is to kind of offer OGM as kind of a consulting service that is able to help spin up organizations. And it seems like there's a hole in the world where, you know, there's Klaus and some other people working on, um, on whatever you think is most important. So I think part of this call is to offer the, the support of OGM in just instantiating that project um, and getting it going, if, if that's of help. So then, you know, in a way, Klaus, we're offering our, our services. And then you you would say, yeah, I want to be a client of that. And like Jerry said, we don't mean client in a paying sense. We mean client in the sense of somebody who is we're helping. Being of service too. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and, and I could imagine, I hope this doesn't complicate things, but I could imagine there being an OGM Earth Stewards Guild that is a loose organization of people who give a shit about these issues, who are busy trying to organize as that to help you and other projects that are parallel to yours that, that are tackling different parts of this, which is like mitigation strategies and, and you know, solar albedo and other, other you know, ocean sprinkling, iron filings in the ocean, God forbid. Um, and, and understanding how those resources work and who shows up and how they can help is like a key piece of this. Yeah, I have been uh, contacted by a group of consultants who are working on a project plan and uh, what they what they want to do is appeal for like a 350 million dollar grant um, to to develop a, uh, a a national consultancy where they insert uh, change makers into uh, across the country for working on very specific um, change initiatives. 
and so I, I participated in a couple of their meetings and then uh, left because uh, I think they were too unclear about what exactly they wanted to accomplish. So they, they were putting an infrastructure together that made a lot of sense to me. Um, I suggested that they should uh, focus on uh, an innovations brokerage uh, concept where you, in, where you insert innovation, innovations, agricultural innovation systems brokers to bring together um, uh, the knowledge required to develop local community food systems. And so then, so they, they recontacted me. And uh, so, so, yeah, so I'm gonna put into the chat the name of the guy who, who is on point there. And I, I, I told him, I mean, that was just a couple of days ago, I told him what we're doing here in OGM and he thought that would be a very logical connection to make, you know, where uh, they are building this, they, they are intending to build this organizational frame. Um, and, uh, uh, but they don't really have content, you know, and that, that was my criticism. How do you apply for grant money unless you have a real clear plan of what the outcome is? Um, but they're very conscious about uh, uh, the severity of our situation and that this does require a mobilization effort. And that's the, that's the way they suggested to go about it. So I thought the, the core principle of what they have in mind uh, makes sense, but uh, um, they, are, they are content deficient. So, so um, that would be an implement a, a practical implementation plan. So I'm trying to imagine, Klaus, your network of people and whether they're open to discussions around things that tend to be hidden. Like, do we assume growth as a goal? Do we assume capital as a framework? Uh, is that network of people comfortable discussing those issues? Yeah, I'm so they just wanted, they, they, he just contacted me actually this morning trying to hope me back into the discussion uh, and asked me to, to do a presentation to their group. But they're basically chemical engineers you know, who, who think that, uh, who are really focused on the energy systems. And I'm trying to, and so, so I you know, explained, I mean, there's, you know, there's only so much you can do with the energy systems. Uh, unless uh, you know, then this, you you fix this elephant in the room, which is the degradation of the ecosystem first, and uh, so so they may be coming around to uh, the conclusion that yes, they, yeah, indeed, this is the low hanging fruit uh, uh, you know, to shift uh, community level food systems into a regenerative format, uh, focus on food sovereignty on a local basis. Um, and, and so these concepts. So I thought maybe there is some, uh, maybe there is some room to, to go on this. So two thoughts on that. One is that this feels like a really specific OGME kind of question, which is how to convince a bunch of engineers to broaden their scope on the problem and how to, how to then evolve the, the framing so that it includes the, the, the pieces that you're talking about. And the second thought I am like, we should connect Judy to him immediately because she's from the American Chemical Society. They speak the same language, I'm pretty sure. And she might be able to help build some bridges or, you know, right away. And I'm just projecting here, but, but like, like I looked at his bio and I'm like, Judy, boom. They have a pretty big team in place. They have uh, 40 some guys and there's some very senior people, uh, a couple of them coming from the military complex. Um, they know how to, I mean, they, we, we need $350 million. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of money. Yeah. But uh, uh, they are used to writing grants and, and, uh, and if they, they are comfortable engaging government you know, to, to fund uh, such large scale projects. So there, there may be something there. Mm -hmm. Klaus, I, I wonder if you need a, a, a team of people doing something or not. Well, um, I mean, I do, I mean, the business climate leaders just assigned me uh, a full-time consultant and a marketing uh, person to develop this webinar. So, so you have different pockets, you know, that uh, um, 
that engage things. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm uh, uh, not sure what my role would be, um, other than other than being you know, a technical uh, a specialist supporter. I mean, I'm. Uh, a, a project manager. I've done large-scale projects. Uh, you know, so um, the organizational frame is unclear to me. Um, I think it is sort of uh, evolving as we speak. Yeah. To to use to use kind of business terminology, which is kind of the wrong to, to terminology, but um, I I can imagine you pretty easily as as more or less CEO of you know a five or ten or twenty or 50 person kind of organization where the CEO is kind of figurehead for what the organization is doing and is able, able to speak eloquently about what's going on and serves as kind of the visionary leader for maybe an operations person who's actually doing the work um, of you know, getting a team to do stuff, you know, um, uh, uh, spinning out innovation centers or, uh, educational efforts or whatever, right? So I, I know you probably don't want, you've probably graduated out being that, that CEO uh, role, but, you know, it's when you speak in the, the meetings, you know, the Thursday meetings, everyone pays attention and it's like Klaus is saying something really important and how can we help him is, is kind of the, the vibe that, that I think people go through. So I think you can take advantage of that if you want. And if you don't, that's fine too. I mean, honestly, I, I would, uh, um, I'm, I'm passionately engaged. Uh, I have no ambitions of any sort. Um, I would, uh, uh, I mean, I would take any role that you think is uh, most helpful, you know, to, to, uh, um, to develop an organizational frame that advances us. Um, so this, so just to say it, then I think what we need is somebody with ambitions. <laughs> well, yeah, that's probably true. And you know, I but, but I have. What I'm saying that there is a there is something about ambition. Maybe the context that, that I was framing here is different from what you are thinking, Peter. I, I'm I'm not. Uh, wanting to push myself out uh, into a leadership role if that's not the, the right thing to do. I, I think okay. it's the right thing to do. So then the question is, you know, leadership going, where's the leadership going? And I, I think it's totally fine. I, I understand, well, maybe this is presumptuous. I understand you used to be kind of retired, but also super passionate about making the world a better place for people who, who are going to, you know, now and later, come, come later. So, so it seems to me that, so there's some kind of ambition somebody needs to say, and the best way to do it uh, is, you know, X, Y, Z, some kind of, um, there's, there's stuff that you know that needs to be operationalized that I'm not sure that anybody else has captured in one place. So what is that oper 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 operationalization? You know, what, you know, um, not that we have 30 or 100 or 1,000 people here, but if we could start an organization that had, you know, two people, 10 people, 50 people, 1,000 people, what would that organization do and where would it go and what should it be doing? What's the most important thing for it to do? A lot of people, even in OGM right now, it's a fairly small organization. A lot of people want to help and just don't know how, how to help. So if, if you can yeah. give them a framework, if you can give them a, a pot of stone soup and say, you know, all the, all the vegetables and stuff that you're carrying around, if we put it together in the pot, we could have soup. You know, that's kind of where there's a lot of people who, who need, you know, direction. They need something. They need a place to go. Yeah. Well, if you replace the word ambition with motivation, then that mm -hmm. would be that would be better yeah. yeah, exactly. And Pete, um, I'm just mindful, mindful of the time. I think you needed to bounce it uh, off. Thank, thank you, Jerry. It turned out that in real time it got canceled uh, or rescheduled. So oh, hot damn. here for another half hour. Awesome. Thanks, Jerry. So, so Motivation. I mean, for example, the idea to, to uh, catch up with Tom, who, who is passionately motivated, but they're also stumbling around 
you know, not really understanding. They, they know the urgency of the moment. They want to engage big time and do something big and move something around, um, but they don't have the direction and the the uh, the support structure in place to really know what they're doing. Now, if we combine that, uh, uh, then then and and I truly, uh, um, I was sort of disappointed that I couldn't persuade them earlier to. Uh, and when I left uh, the, the group, I was saying, look, if you change your minds and you're willing to look at this from putting in a, uh, an innovations capacity, you know, on a community based level, I'm back in. I think that has legs. I mean, that would have potential to really uh, to really create an organization. Yes, Jerry. So so the key two words that popped out of what you just said were stumbling around. And um, there are lots of entities that have really great intentions and are building big projects. Some of those groups are just like really efficient at sucking money out of grant pools and they're organizing themselves to do something that they feel good about, but, and, and will bring a lot of money in, into the thing. Some of those have actually figured things out and, and might change the world. And then there, there's sort of others that are out like high functioning groups that, that are doing stuff in the world that, and my, my, my tendency here is to do a radar scan and to find the high functioning groups and then figure out how to turbocharge what they're doing and to worry less about a group that doesn't feel like it's going to you know, get off the ground. And I think, I think you, your instinct to walk away and say, hey, when you guys fix this, you know, call me back was, was terrific. And I think that like going where, the, where, the, where things are breaking through and being helpful, I think is uh, maybe important for all of us looking at where we spend our time. So I mean, so that's one of the things that my, my instinct to do is if, if it were possible is to just do a Vulcan mind meld with you, Klaus, and download a map of the groups that you're involved in, where they're pointing, and and what you think, you know, and sort of needs and wants kind of kind of a, a mapping analysis of that, uh, but that may not be possible or necessary. Go ahead, Doug. Well, I think what you just said would be very helpful to do that kind of map, and that could lead to broader questions. Uh, I certainly, well. I'm feeling a little bit like I'm from Mars at the moment and, and alien to the, some of the conversation. Uh, I was reading the Biden infrastructure program yesterday and buried in it, there's language, we've got to do all this in order to be more competitive. More competitive with who? Uh, if you're competitive, that implies winners and losers. We can't afford winners and losers. We need a broader game plan than that. So when it comes to Klaus's project, there are questions that I have that would be very important to me. And that is, um, to what extent are we going to be providing a game plan for agribusiness uh, and big corporations and major finance? Uh, certainly uh, the money that's being spent in the world right now to buy land is huge and it's all towards concentration of profit and power. So the question is, where does Klaus's network fit into that? And I think the mapping would be a way to allow us to surface those questions and staying together in the same conversation. Totally agree. Thank you, Dan. Welcome to the conversation, Mark. You're stepped into the flowing stream. It's, it, so I wonder, is just just brainstorming is mm -hmm. there a, a place here there's a nascent mapping guild um within our purview um do we approach them and ask if they want to map climate change uh, so so there's a difference to me between mapping climate change and mapping klaus's and engagements and involvements and yep. his perception of those groups which is the map i just described yep it's a it's very particular to klaus and your your, your understanding of the groups you're involved in and the re it kind of goes back to why as a retiree, you're pouring your time and energy into the, those particular um, activities. Um, and then from that, we can kind of build out, but it may well be, we can, we can just create a, we could create a two hour call and invite anybody who's a mapper uh, to that call. Uh, we could ask you Klaus to beforehand, just in outline form or any way you want to, to just put URLs in or name the name the groups, uh, you know, the Climate Coalition, whoever else that you're already involved in, so that we can just take that for granted and have a baseline of, of organizations, and then deepen our understanding of what that means and see what we come up with with people riffing on this and with a couple different tools, a little bit a little bit like an applied hoedown, 
uh, in that we would have a very specific sort of ask uh, and, and direction for it. Yeah, my, my I mean, I mean, I mean, I retired in 2012. You know, I tried to engage uh, in, in as a working as a consultant, and I did end up with a bunch of theme park projects. But even when I did a peer review on uh, uh, Disneyland Shanghai with my former colleagues, I tried to insert the sustainability argumentation in it, and it went absolutely nowhere. Mm. So, so out of this, then I, I attached myself to NGOs, the Sierra Club, Business Climate Leaders, Citizen Climate Lobby, and and you know, I was being able to move myself into positions of leadership. But then you realize that these groups are really impotent. You know, they, they, they. Uh, I mean, first of all, the Sierra Club. I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I, I did the, the the last webinar. I engaged the president uh, Ramon Cruz uh, into the into the webinar. And we ended up with 7,700 people signing on to this. Um, and it turned out that the Sierra Club wasn't ready for it. They com it completely blindsided them. They hadn't, they expected maybe, you know, 80, 100 people or so like they normally have for their webinars. And we made this so big. And then the staff member who supported me got fired and the, the and his boss got fired. Wow. And, and then you find out, well, you now Bloomberg is paying 140 million dollars to the to the Sierra Club, so they are completely entrapped into you know, what they can talk about and how they can engage themselves into the political process. Uh, and that obviously wasn't the right thing. So, so I'm going, um, you know, so so this this uh, NGO route has its limitations to to what you can really accomplish here um business climate leaders is is good ccl but you no know, they just uh, uh in the new release of the uh energy innovations and carbon dividend act made all kinds of compromises with with the agricultural sector uh to exempt them from the carbon fee so they would sign on to the bill and then you go well i mean have i talked about nothing for the last three, four years, right? Um, so so I, I'm, I'm really convinced that uh, the way to go about this here is to, is to empower innovators, you know, who, who are changing the market dynamics uh, and, and, uh, and, the, and the only, and, and, and starting in the retail sector, and the only way to do that really is start at community level. Um, you can't go ahead. Um, so a, a, a couple thoughts. Um, first thought is Adam Warbach, who was the youngest ever president of the Sierra Club several generations back is a close friend. We could figure out that, but I don't, I don't know that Sierra Club matters here because what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing from what you just said, Klaus, is kind of like, I feel like the naive Jerry was interested in your current involvements and how do we accelerate and improve them? The slightly improved perspective Jerry is saying, Maybe our question is how, how do we help Klaus aim his energies so that they're actually really productive so you don't feel like you're speaking into a void? Because I've been in plenty of projects where it's like, Jesus, I've been here talking about these important things for a year now. Has nobody heard me? Like, like if you feel like it's not having an effect or how do we change the formula so that it does catch on? How do we hack the system so that, you're, so that you do have an effect? And maybe, maybe what we help you do is create some opinion pieces because what you just said about the capture of the Sierra Club by Bloomberg would make a really nice New York Times opinion piece. And I'm thinking here of Peter Buffett, son of Warren Buffett, who wrote this great piece about the philanthropic industrial complex. And he said, at one point, my dad gave each of, each, each of us kids more money so that we suddenly got invited to bigger meetings about philanthropy. And where I started to see that sometimes the right hand is trying to fix what the left hand broke. And he was like, the dysfunctions are actually inside of capitalism and we can gift as much money as we want to. And if the system is still completely broken, we're screwed. And what you're describing is the dysfunctions of the systems trying to fix things, which is super interesting. And if we can make them more functional and include in the making them more functional, bring the voices that are not at the table into the table in some other credible way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's super high payoff. Now, Again, I'm, I'm, I'm sniffing here for where is the highly functional, where, where are things actually working? What is actually taking off? Go ahead, Mark. 
Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you and, and Klaus, especially Klaus, and you know, sharing the same frustration. Uh, what you've been describing and since I jumped in um, is exactly what I've been experiencing in this last eight years. Um, and and I, I see a lot of common, you know, even in, in the values, what we're trying to achieve with what I'm working on is mostly, as you guys all know, um, indigenous rights and especially uh, to their land, which is to me the as equal as what you described close yesterday, um, as the low hanging fruit, something that could materialize very quickly into uh, improvement in, in the way we fight climate change. But all these NGOs, they're businesses. The, their, their business model is based on fear. You just like, uh, and, and, and working with big corporations and that started in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Right when they were starting to bring businesses, high-end CEOs, on their board, and so, asking money and consulting for them, and then they said, "Well, you know, we cannot, we cannot buy the hand that feeds us." So, um, so just to bring in the spirit of brainstorming, two ideas, like, um, sorry, Sunrise Movement, I think it's called. Um, like, should we be reaching out to youth movements who maybe are so young and so new that they haven't been captured properly yet and help them sort of turbocharge and have an effect on the other groups? Should we, uh, one thing I've recommended in a couple places and, and the groups that have never picked up on it is approach the children of the people in power. So sort of quietly figure out who the kids are, approach them and create some artifact with the kids that is about the topic that comes in and basically resets everybody because they're going to watch because it's their kid doing this. Um, and, and, and just as a, as a hack of the system, as a hack of, of people's consciousness so that they don't treat this as an arm's length thing that they do as their day job. Um, but, but how do we, how do we find, and, and part of my reason for being eager to map what's in your head, Klaus, isn't just that there's organizations working on this that would show up in a systems map, but rather, that there's dysfunctions at work that would show up in a better systems map, that we could start to model uh, how different organizations' objectives have been hijacked or uh, other, other sort of nuances of, of what's going on that might help us shift where we apply pressure. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think it, it, it has to be a marriage of uh, hedge fund money and, uh, and innovators that are out there uh, uh, trying to do things. Um, and, and it has to be in a social investment frame. It has to be, uh, it, it can't be, you know, another building, another uh, chain operation. And um, so, so it has to be a social investment fund that is, that is, uh, that is uh, um, not going to create the next mess. Uh, so, so I got connected with David Wetzel. Now he joined us uh, 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 a little while ago, and I joined his uh, his group there mm -hmm. and participated in some of their meetings. So that so here is a global group of um, of uh, uh, entry level you know, businesses who are working on local food hubs and and. Uh, uh, and and you know, ideas of regenerative farming and so on, and uh, they could use a lot of help, um, but they don't even know how to ask for help. And and even if you offer it, they don't understand what it is. Um, and so, um, I mean, I I, I uh, posted uh, marketing one hundred and one. You know, here is you know how you develop an entry-level market segmentation strategy to match your operational capacity with the best fit customers in the market. Right? Um, here is how you plan and, and uh, your, your production ahead of time, uh, because by the, in, uh, basically every crop is being sold before you put it in the ground. And if you don't do that, you, know, you may end up sitting on a crop that you don't have a market for they don't get it right i mean it's just so but but he there this is another group where uh, we could make a real impact in structuring a support organization that guides them you know it, and this is a global group i mean they, they have uh, people all over the world participating so that, that that would be a network where we could come in and say let let us help you 
and let us structure you know, a, a support system that you can call on. And let us, let us match you with funders who would be interested in, in, uh, in fast tracking you uh, because of the significance of, of what you're doing in community level food systems development. So, so I, th I think there has to be money in the process um, and, and, uh, and there have to be motivated investors you know, who are on the same page and who don't look for maximizing returns and building the next empire. Um, and ironically, part of the steward ownership, part of the reason for steward ownership being interesting to us and where we're aiming is that it does that. It helps, it helps take the IPO and the personal riches off the table um, and helps build a really durable, long-lasting enterprise that can feed the commons, that can do a bunch of other things. Um, I typed into the Zoom chat that maybe we can be movement therapists because it feels like a piece of what's needed here is some, some psychic and organizational acupressure to, to help some of these groups become more functional and actually have an impact because there's, there's a bunch of groups that are trying to do stuff with people with great intentions who have great brains and like, like are, are coming together. And none of us have sort of talked about how any of these is like really, you know, kicking ass. Like we, we haven't said, and, and maybe one of us knows, but, but could we point to a couple of groups that are just like doing fantastically? Like if, if we just amplified what these two groups were doing, the world would be a much better place in a decade. Can we name those? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there is the Wallace Center, which is uh, the, the uh, Good Food Network. So they're supporting food hub developments you know, throughout the country. And so I was trying to help them and, and uh, I engaged you know, a couple of times and then I sort of got dropped. And I was sort of wondering what, what's happening. And then you find out that the Walton family is funding them um, and that they have these kids you know, spinning around <laughs> doing stuff that is completely ineffective. Two thirds of these food hubs uh, don't make any money, some of the ones that lose money. And they're basically uh, operated by grants from the government, uh, which is a complete waste. So, so I mean, there is, there is definitely, um, uh, there is definitely room for improvement, but you couldn't get in there because they don't want you, you know, they, they, they have this network, but they don't want you to, to engage it. Or to tip the gravy train. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so, but, so, Go ahead. But the the uh, the rege regeneration. Um, I'm going to my my internet is super slow because I'm on mobile. But the the David Wetzel group, for example, I think that has that has potential. That uh, uh, that group could really uh, um, uh, uh, go places and be fired up uh, if uh, if it's being sourced properly. You know, and if we come mm -hmm. there with money and and uh, technical expertise and support, particularly in the marketing field. Um, I mean, it's just basic, this is really basic uh, core marketing, you know, where, where you need to know who your customers are and then uh, specialize your, your production uh, towards that. Um, yeah, and then, then the idea that uh, Tom had to uh, uh, develop uh, a national network of uh, uh, support specialists, if those were like innovation brokers for agricultural innovation systems, that that would have potential. So there are ways uh, to operationalize this, but I think first step would be to find uh, uh, interested investors, you know, who who would want to see such a, such an effort develop. Could you explain what an innovation broker does? Because it sounds like somebody who makes a living from ideas that should be free. I'm probably misunderstanding that. Um, hold on for a second, I'm, I'm, because I'm I'm trying to catch up. My my internet is so is so oh. hopelessly slow. It's uh, sure, sorry. Uh, yeah. um, so here here is uh, this thing that David uh, Betzel is doing, um, and uh, let me let me get the innovation spokers. Thank you. And and Dave Witzel, by the way, is a dear and old friend, and I think a lot of people in his community are, are friends of many of our many of ours. So. There's, there's, I think, lots of deep ties there. 
Yeah. So the the uh, the idea of uh, of brokerage. Um, yeah. This, uh, uh, let me find it. And David Hodgson, who's in the middle of that, is also a dear and old friend. So, and I haven't checked in with Hodgson in forever. So, what an innovation! What what you what what is completely missing uh, in the American agricultural system? I mean, I worked uh, you know, as a as a head of corporate target group marketing for a very large company. I had I had a thirteen point five billion euro portfolio in thirty countries. And, and my teams were, were uh, working on market segmentation strategies where we would identify uh, target groups, types of customers who uh, were compatible with our assortments and with our operational capacity, basically. And then we, we would develop training materials for over 6,000 salespeople you know, to instruct them, look for this type of customers, here's how you find them. And we would advise operations and procurement. Here, here's what you need to do to round off to so we can service these customers. So that's basically brokerage. Um, let me see if I can find this article. Well, I, I, I apologize because I wasn't thinking about what you were just explaining in terms of the brokerage. So, so basically, making market making of, of, a, of a sense between the right fit between what an organization has to offer and what <clears throat> people in the market need. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean you match um, what you what, what the innovation broker would do, and it's explained in this article better than, than than I can explain it here right now. I'll send it to you in a moment. Thanks. Um, but you you basically have um, a, a communications process where you need a broker in the middle on the one hand to understand what is the demand for certain products, what's the quality, price range, and so on, and then go to the operator and say, can you produce this? And if not, what, what, what can you produce? And then you go back to the market and say, here's what we can do. And then you match these two together. Uh, and, and, uh, and then you develop also the aggregation capacity required where you may have multiple farmers supplying one customer. So it's a very technical function. Okay, so it could also be a matchmaker of supply and demand, or a smoother of flow, or there's lots of different names for it. When you called it in, when you called it innovation broker, <clears throat> my brain went immediately to somebody who's trying to capture value on innovations in the middle of the stream and and adding a layer of cost to it. So the framing just as innovation broker wasn't actually working for me very well. <clears throat> and I'll I'll read the article now. Uh, and Doug, did you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, let's see. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. Um, I'm going to take my frustration with this conversation as actually a contribution to broadening the conversation. Uh, I find the discussion around markets uh, way too conservative to fit the realities we're going towards. We're moving into a world where, let's say, half the people are going to be unemployed and not have income. There are huge migrations going on. Uh, where people are going to be need to need to be fed. We need levels of organization that are Marshall Plan like to be able to feed people, and that's going to feed back into uh, the innovation world, where the innovation world feels to me like it's capitalism, uh, and it wants people who are going to make uh, more money out of the system that's already concentrating wealth to a a, a terrible degree. So there's a an, uh, a rethinking here of what we're doing that's going to take some time because we not, I don't have the answers at all. Nobody does. Uh, I think what Klaus is working on is really important, but it does not reach the level of concern that I have. I really appreciate what how you expressed that, Doug. Yeah, that was great, Doug. That's super helpful. Um, I I so we have uh, uh, six minutes. I don't know if folks want to stay past the hour, but um, I would like to come out of this with a couple, maybe maybe we do, maybe we don't, come out with a couple of specific action items. If it's mapping, if it's writing something up, if it's having another call, whatever. The, uh, so in that interest, uh, Klaus, the mapping exercise I described earlier, <clears throat> does that sound valuable to you? And would you be happy to participate in something like that? And if not, then we won't, we won't follow that path. Yeah, of course, yeah. 
That sounds good. Okay, so we can we can arrange that, and I, and I think we'll learn stuff. I'm having I'm having the feeling that that leads us into a critique of the system that could help us steer what OGM does in intervening in the system, and could be informative to how you the role you're playing in the system, Klaus, so that you are less frustrated in the long run. And Doug, I think that the the big picture urgency uh, that you have been holding here for us. Um, is important for that conversation as well. And may well be, Klaus, a way to light up in people's heads what's wrong. And it could be that, that one thing that's needed here is something that is uh, simultaneously, uh, we're all doomed and things are gonna crash. And looky here, we're holding the cards of the kingdom for how to fix this. And we're just not being functional in deploying it or, or figuring out how to, how to get it to work. Yeah, that what I what I see strategically as as possible is on is one on the one hand is to convince the six multinational corporations that control eighty percent of uh, global markets to change their ways, um, and that seems to be unlikely because uh, through, organized through the World Economic Forum, they have chosen a path that is that is already investing billions of dollars into an entirely unsuitable solution, you know, with impossible meets and, and that sort of thing. The other option is to, to create a grassroots, ground up uh, uh, revolution in localized food systems and, and to empower small businesses with a, with, a, with a macro support structure to go to scale. So, so that the scale you're developing is macro level support to independent uh, operators that can draw resources from this macro structure. So I have a thought in my, my brain called the hidden war on small farms. And I'm just realizing from this conversation how much I've collected over time about how fucked you are if you're a small farmer. Like, like between arbitrage and futures markets and monopolists on seed and grain and pesticide, like, like all these different things are basically fighting. And the fact that your tractor is reporting data that you have to buy back, all this stuff just operates against you. Never mind you're a black farmer or something else where people are just trying to get you out of the neighborhood. So, so that's helping me uncover my own, my own discoveries that I haven't realized about how screwed up the system is, which then means that interventions like what you just described, which then trickle back out to land ownership and land use policies of the kind that Mark is involved in, um, is kind of sort of that stuff starts to come into the picture really vividly, because if we can help people hack their way toward the shift that includes sustainability, that includes making a great living in places that are going to be unemployed now, and matching themselves to the demands for food that are gonna be different and outside of the very constrained normal supply system that, that knows how to take soybeans from the Pampas or from uh, you know, Illinois and drop them into silos and turn them into fuel. If we, can, if we can figure out alternatives, I think that's really powerful. The solutions are all out there. Yeah. And it's nothing we need to invent. The truth yeah. is out there. Instead of pulling it together. Um, I have one action item, Jerry, to convene session to map Klaus's brain. What else? Another call like this. Um, uh, Jerry will post the recording to, um, actually I'll write that down. To YouTube and to the channel, the Metamos channel. Yep. Yeah. Yep, I'll do that as I usually do. What I think um, is in this conversation, we have broadened rather than narrowed. And in that sense, it's an ogm -y conversation. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate it. I think where we ended up is a good OGM conversation. Thank you for that. Um, because I think, I think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm perceiving that each of us is frustrated with the topic and the conversation in a slightly different way. But I'm also perceiving that we, what you just said holds that that we we sort of broke through a couple of things and got somewhere. At least at least I have a different perspective on several things than when than an hour ago. Um, I feel like this conversation is going to fizzle out if we don't keep it going. Um, <clears throat> so how do we make this conversation larger and more functional if we were to hold the same conversation next week? For example, because with a week's notice, we probably get more people. But how do we frame this so that 
we're focusing on the right issues here. What we could also do is schedule this time next week for the mapping session, Klaus, if the time works for you, we can just choose this time. Uh, and then the week after that, digest all of it and go back into this kind of session uh, with a little more sort of experience under a belt. Yeah, next week, I uh, started from Wednesday through Sunday, I'm traveling. Mm. So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm out of commission for that time. Okay. So I'll work around your schedule for scheduling the mapping session. Anything else? So I'm not sensing an urgency to have another call like this one. Well, no, I think that we want to uh, include the Thursday group in this conversation uh, by telling them sort of what we did. And, and maybe even with Klaus being absent next Friday, we just uh, do this call again with more people. And, and if I may suggest, Jerry, we could uh, involve David Wetzel <clears throat> involve Tom into this conversation and say, hey, look, we, we have been bouncing around here. Um, would you guys be interested to advance, to advance this conversation? That sounds great. Um, I'd hate to invite them and then have you not be on the call. So that means next Friday is not a good time for that call. To, to be yeah, sorry. it would be hard. My, my, my schedule is just not predictable. I know, I know. You're going to be on the, on the hoof. <clears throat> but, I, but this conversation sounds good. I mean, I'd love to to host this. And, and it may um, take a little bigger run to get these guys onto the phone. And I mean, Tom's last name is Rame, R-E-H-M. Right. Uh, so I like the idea of reporting out to a, thir to a Thursday call. Um, uh, I'm going to miss the next Thursday call. So who, who wants to report out? I can do it the week after. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be there either. So maybe we should just wait anyway. Uh, yes, why don't we hold off on reporting in? I think the idea is great. I think that the logistics here are complicated for reporting it in. Um, I'm going to put in 415 call. Sounds great. Uh, and then, Jerry, you're going to reach out to Dave Witzel and Tom Rem? Yeah, um, I will connect to Tom Ram mentioning you, Klaus, unless you want to make a more formal intro. I'll connect you. Okay, thank you. Um, and then we'll pick a we'll pick the date when you're back uh, to have this conversation again. So we'll just work around your schedule to do a mapping call and a follow on to this call. Go ahead, Mark. Yes, I uh, put the URL of a group called OSC2, mm -hmm. which is one step closer to organic and sustainable communities. And Klaus, if you can take a look at it, and if you think that these people could be of uh, help, then I'd be happy to uh, make a connection and invite them for the next call. Okay. And I, I, I think a broad mapping of, of groups like this and like the ones that you're involved in, Klaus, would be super useful and is part of our directories, <clears throat> you know, as part of, I think, where, where Flotilla's aiming and what Vincent would be gathering and all of that. So, and I don't, Pete, I don't know how this fits what Flotilla's up to, but. Uh, but that seems to be an interesting part of the mapping that's needed here. Um, uh, so Tilla is really built, based around building the tools. Um, is this more a Vincent, Vincent and capitalist kind of thing? Well, capitalist. even uh, that was an interesting. What's, what's it called? Uh, what's it called? Catalyst. Catalyst. I called it capitalist, which is a list of capitals. <laughs> that's all it is. Um, <laughs> Flotilla and, and even Vincent, Vincent gets a little bit involved, but it's really about the tools, building the tools. So you, you need some folks to, you know, uh, so I think maybe it's reaching out to, to the mapping guild. Okay, um, I'm just, I'm you just like, me? Um, probably or, me, because I haven't, I haven't really been there. So I can, you know, yeah, it's probably me. Uh, if you want to do it, that'd be great too. Um, I need to copy the section. Okay. Uh, so this is going well. This is going on a wiki page. Yeah, I, and I'm, I've got it. I've got it open in my browser, so I can harvest yeah, it yeah. easily. Uh, Jerry, to reach out to Mapping Guild. Mappers Guild. Mapping Channel. Yeah. Um, to ask them for to. 
to invite them to map Klaus's brain? Is that the specific ask? Um, we, yeah, we, we also got somewhere with directories. I, th I think maybe this is the place to start. Um, mm -hmm. And, and yeah, map two things, uh, initiatives. My internet just froze. Oh, that's why you were so quiet. Yeah. I was like, Klaus is awfully still there. <laughs> I, I would love, uh, somebody has to create a utility or maybe some people are doing this. I mean, it, it's, it's easy enough to do manually, but to take a snapshot of you and your screen right this second and basically make that your dummy so that if you do have to step away, you can just put yourself in there in what, in what you're wearing at the moment. Shouldn't maybe it's just a little bit of noise. So it looks like it. With, with a, little, a little auto behavior. And yeah. you can do the idle behavior now. I mean, we can, you know, we can we can uh, deep fake we can deep fake motion easily. So, done. It's a good idea. That should be a little function, so you can step away. And soon we won't know who's actually like real and who's not, and who's like there as an avatar in every meeting. There you go. <laughs> so, we, and we will look fondly back on the days when we knew that each of us was actually sitting there. Um, cool. Uh, We've got the, the Nvidia video compression does that. Shit. It, it actually, it watches you and then, you know, it takes a snapshot, watches you, watch you move, watch you move around. And then all it sends is, uh, you know, he turned his, his head this way, he turned his head that way. And, and then the other side regenerates you? it. Yeah, deep takes it on the other side. Ow. <laughs> Ow, man, okay. Um, this has been super useful. Uh, we have to-dos and uh, shall we wrap it up? Yep, that sounds... Thank you Thanks so all. much. Very, totally Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Ciao.